lifting up Jesus, opening his word from Australia, Denmark, Israel, Japan, New Zealand, Northern Ireland, Republic of Ireland, Singapore, South Africa, United Kingdom, Thailand, the Philippines, United States, and throughout the world. You're watching Morial TV. All right, well, London Mayor Sadiq Khan recently said that the terror attacks are part and parcel now for big cities. Former UK Independence Party leader Nigel Farage says that kind of thinking is a mistake. In other words, what he is saying, Nigel, is that uh, uh, you got to deal with it. It's just, it's just life in big cities. Uh, what did you make of that and the message it sends? Well, I think there's a bit of a trend here because just two days after that horrendous lorry attack that took place in Nice back on July the 14th, two days afterwards, the French Prime Minister Manuel Valls said that this is a part of life in modern day France. So Valls says it in Nice. Uh, Sadiq Khan says that it applies to big cities. I mean, you may as well just put up the white flag of surrender uh, to say, we, you know, we're just going to normalize terrorism. And what makes me really annoyed is it's the very same political class who have, whenever anybody has questioned open door Im immigration, whenever anybody says, look, surely we should security check people, we should make sure that newcomers into our country, agree with our values, gets condemned. And what I'd like to see from the French Prime Minister and from Sadiq Khan, before they say anything, is an apology for what their policies and their ideas have done to all of us. Well, there aren't words to describe the grief and anger that our city will be feeling today. I'm appalled and furious that these cowardly terrorists would deliberately target innocent Londoners and bystanders enjoying their Saturday night. Uh, there can be no justification for the acts of these uh, terrorists, uh, and I'm quite clear that we will never let them win, nor will we allow them to cower our city or Londoners. Hi, this is Tim from Morial TV and Morial Radio here with James Jacob Prash. Uh, live, a little bit of an update uh, after 9 o'clock on the East Coast. And I heard some from from some professional band friends and, and mates of mine in the past that there was recently there was just an attack in London. They have shut down London Bridge and a market down there and some other places. Um, but uh, my friends are safe, which I'm very grateful for. Thank God for that. And uh, Jacob, when are people going to get it about this chaos? Well, it is June. Third today, and I'm in. You can screen for bombs. How do you screen for automobiles? This happened in the south of France, where Muslims just took an automobile, took a truck, and began running people over and killing them. This is another kind of terror, and it's getting worse. Now it's being done in London. Someone running out with a knife, stabbing at school children, and killing people in front of the British Parliament. Now, it happens in Manchester with a bombing. If you can't get inside, we'll bomb the people coming out of the arena. And now in London, they just grab a truck. There's no way to defend from this. There's no way to prevent it. You'd have to arm policemen to begin with and put them all over the place. But you're not allowed to discriminate against Muslims, despite the fact that two-thirds of Muslims say they would not notify the police if they knew of an Islamic attack. We're still fed the lie again by the media and by the British and American governments that it's religion of peace and it's only a small minority. Most Muslims are not like this. Well, most Muslims are like this. It is the minority who do not support this. When two-thirds will say they won't tell the police. Going back to September 11th, a report in the New York Times showed a survey 68% of Muslims globally from 16 countries, including the USA, said they thought the September 11th attacks, attacks were justified. This is what you are dealing with. Going back to the time of the Puritans, Revelation chapter uh, 8 and 9, they identified the locusts who first appear in the book of Joel but make a reappearance eschatologically at the end of the age, as an Islamic invasion. 
the Puritan fathers thought that going back now to the 17th century, early 18th century. Believers in Great Britain identified that as Islam following the Islamic attempts to invade Europe in the 16th century when it was stopped at the outskirts of Vienna. Islam has tried multiple times to invade Europe. They were stopped by Charles Martel in France. They were stopped by Ferdinand and Isabella in Spain. They were stopped by the Hazas, whose leaders converted to Judaism in Eastern Europe. They were stopped all the time by somebody. But that is when they came in unison. Now they're coming as refugees, and you have a fifth column living in your own countries. Corrupt federal judges say we have to let them into United States despite the Orlando attacks, despite the San Bernardino attacks, despite the Boston suicide bomber attacks. You can't discriminate against people who are trying to kill you. Oh, that's not all Muslims. Two-thirds of them support it. Certainly in Britain. It would not be different in America. I've said many times this is God's judgment on the Judeo-Christian world for having turned their backs on their Christian heritage. Now let's look at what is targeted and being impacted. Major rock concerts had to be canceled in Britain and more being canceled. You have this phenomena of these stupid left-wing pop stars pandering to the left-wing agenda that Muslims are are just like us, and so forth. Well, some Muslims are moderate. Some are moderate. But the majority are not. The moderate ones are the minority. Dire Straits could not play even in a moderate Muslim country, such as Dubai. The lead guitar player, Mark Knopf, is Jewish. That's Dubai. Uh, and it's getting no better. No go zones in major British cities. I warned that because of Theresa May's voting against Israel in UNESCO, in the UN, at the behest of Barack Hussein Obama, God's judgment was specifically going to come on Britain. She did it. She went against Israel to placate Islam, and now we have the repercussions. How can this be stopped? First of all, there's a spiritual battle. Unless there is a return to Jesus, it can't be stopped. This invasion will continue. It is setting the stage for Antichrist. He will come, the kings of the north and the kings of the south, and pose himself as somebody who can bring peace with the Islamic world and stop the invasions. But you've got corrupt politicians, politicians in Europe like Angela Merkel and Mr. Marcon going along with it insisting on bringing these people in without being able to vet them, despite the rapes and attacks on German women, despite the terrorist attacks in Europe, including Germany in Munich, as well as those in France. It doesn't matter. Marcon and Merkel will just continue to facilitate it. Barack Obama did everything he could to facilitate Islamic terror in this country. Everything. He literally gave back $150 billion to the Iranians in unfrozen funds while they are sponsoring terror to kill Americans. Now, unfortunately, it is not the corrupt politicians who betray us who get killed. They have private bodyguards and secret service. It's ordinary people. But again, let's look at the pop concerts now being canceled in London. One had to be postponed in Germany. In the music industry... Because of internet and iTunes and bootlegging that cannot be controlled, the music industry is 50% of what it was. You go to Soho Square in London, Denmark Street in London, it is a diminished industry. In Hollywood, it is a diminished industry. The record plant will be the last studio built of any major size. It's a finished industry. You see people who are older and even almost elderly now, like the Rolling Stones, Bruce Springsteen, are going out filling stadiums. Why? Because they can't sell recordings anymore. 
Now that's what's being hit. It'll be too dangerous to go to these concerts and music festivals. There's going to be cancellations. They're reaping what they sowed. They're reaping what they sowed. These people who sing about love and peace and include a religion who's out to destroy them in it. It just doesn't work. Again, I am not saying all Muslims are terrorists. But when two-thirds of British Muslims say they wouldn't report it to the police, most are supportive of terror. It's the minority who are not. When you have Mr. Trump giving speeches, but will continue to fund the Palestinian Authority, who sponsor terror with American tax dollars and will not stop funding them, after breaking his promise so far about relocating the American embassy to Jerusalem, again, to play gate Islam. Or when Mr. Trump gives a speech about terror in Saudi Arabia, and he doesn't tell the Saudi Arabians to stop funding these mosques and madrasas, and stop funding the CAIR, the Council of American Islamic Relations, three of whose officials were tied to terrorist organizations. Unless there is a deportation of Muslims on a grand scale who are not U.S. citizens and a demand that those who are behave the way German Americans did in the Second World War and Italian Americans did in the Second World War, unless that happens and they're called upon to prove their loyalty as German and Italian and Japanese Americans did in the Second World War, it's not going to stop. Why? The worship of mammon. Petrol dollars. That's why it won't stop. And Mr. Trump so far is turning out to be not much better than those who preceded him. Not as bad as Obama, but not a lot better. His speech to the Saudi Arabians and Islamic leaders about Hamas, it had no potency. It was just more of the same. It's not going to change anything. The Saudi Arabians are going to continue to fund radicalism by funding these mosques and madrasas who teach Salafism, Wahhabism. That stuff engenders support for jihad, which to them is terror. Unless the mainstream media and our crooked politicians, open liars like Obama and Bush are obvious, but other ones, General Mattis among them now, Subscribing to this lie, the fact of the matter is, as I've said before, you have the doctrine of tafrit in Islam, permissible lying. They say peace when they mean hudna, a temporary ceasefire, so they can get the advantage to continue the jihad. In other words, Islam as a religion allows permissible lying to the infidel, to the non-Muslim, and that's what they tell politicians in the West. And that's what the media holds up. Something that anybody in their right mind knows is a lie. People like Bridget Gabriel, an Arab journalist, tells the truth. People like Daniel Pipes, an academic, tells the truth. Christian converts from Islam tell the truth. CNN lies. MSNBC lies. And the White House lies. And number 10 Downing Street lies. They lie to themselves and they lie to us. Islam is unable to live at peace even with itself. Again, two thirds said they would not tell the police. How are you going to protect when you, your country has millions of Muslims in it and more are coming? How are you going to protect when all they have to do is hijack a truck and get a knife? You can't protect from that kind of terror. Even Israel, that's done a better job than anybody, cannot fully protect from it. And they have soldiers all over the place with machine guns who just shoot these barbarians dead. As soon as they attempt a terror attack, they get shot dead in Israel. But even Israel can't stop it. This is God's judgment. Now it's come to London. Our leaders bear responsibility. Certainly the Bush dynasty, certainly above all Barack Obama, certainly the Clintons, and now I'm sorry to add President Trump to that list with his soft peddling.
his refusal to go to the heart of the issue, which is Saudi Arabian petrodollars funding radicalism, and American tax dollars funding the Palestinian Authority. He didn't stop it. He didn't go to the heart of the issue. Is this what we voted for? I warned that Theresa May was going to bring God's judgment on Britain, and I warned that Manchester was not going to be the end of it. Manchester was not even the beginning of it. Now it's London, central London. My hometown, New York, my sister's husband was killed in the Twin Towers. I used to live in Jerusalem. I saw a bus right where I was five minutes later, 17 people blown to bits on, on a bus, some of them children, some of them Arabs by Islamic terrorists. People being stabbed to death, school children on a class trip being attacked by Muslims with knives. Oh, you're not allowed to say Muslims, says the CAIR, the special prosecutor in investigating Mr. Trump was the FBI official who changed the manuals. You're not allowed to talk about Islamic terror in dealing with Islam. Now he's the special prosecutor. He ought to be specially prosecuted. Because the CAIR objected. CAIR, funded by Muslim oil money, by fundamentalists, demanding the rights that they do not give Christians or Jews in their own countries. And do so with the blessings of the left-wing media and our corrupt politicians of both parties. And Britain is worse. After the Manchester attacks, you had the idiocy of the Archbishop of Canterbury defending Islam. The idiocy, the idiocy of the mayor of Manchester saying that the person who did this to those children was not a Muslim. What was he? He certainly wasn't a Methodist, a Baptist, or a Pentecostal, or a Jew. The lies continue. The narrative continues. The insanity continues. This is God's judgment. And it's getting worse and will continue to get worse. You can't protect against this kind of terror that happened in London today or that happened when they attacked the tourists in front of Parliament or the way they attacked the truck in France. When your country has millions of Muslims, and when your country has millions of trucks, how are you going to stop that kind of terror? The conflict will be inevitable, as in the book of Daniel and in the days that Daniel prophesied, the kings of the north, the kings of the south. There will be a war with Islam, whether we like it or not. They can call it a war on terror. It is a war with Islam because Islam is at war with the Western world. Finally, Mr. Trump called it radical Islam. The problem is the terrorists do not say it is radical Islam. They say it is just Islam. And they are right. In Northern Ireland, I saw the worst of the terror attacks. I was there for some of the most terrible times in what happened in Northern Ireland. I have no love for the Irish Republican Army it's not even the true IRA. These are the provisional IRA. They're not even the historical IRA. Michael Collins was a military commander. He was a soldier, not a terrorist. He was a partisan. He was not a criminal. I have no regard for the provisional IRA, nor for the Protestant terrorists, the UVF, Ulster Volunteer Force. None of them. But if they killed children, if they even killed civilians, but certainly if they killed children, it would have been a mistake, like in Omar, the bombing in Omar, Northern Ireland. It would have been a mistake. Bad enough, but it would have been a mistake. Fundamentalist Muslims will target children. They will kill their own children. The idea you can make peace with a religious ideology like this is absurd. It would be like trying to make peace with Adolf Hitler. You can't make peace with people like that. 
It's impossible. Of the 57 Muslim countries in the world, not one will give Christians the rights that they get in America or Britain. You have the ridiculous government of Canada pandering to them. Mr. Bush, pretend, uh, Mr. Bush sold America out to them. Barack Obama effectively helped them, as did the Clintons. And now Mr. Trump is pretending to stand up to them. Although he's not as bad as his predecessors. He is, in a sense, no better. Why is this? It is a result of the worship of mammon. Close the door. Again, I do not hate Muslims. I am not advocating violence against Muslims. I do not say there are not moderate Muslims, but they are the minority and simply facing the statistical facts. 68% said the September 11th attacks were morally justified Two-thirds of British Muslims said they would not inform the police. Don't tell me it's about peace and tolerance. Yet the left-wing media, and for the sake of the petrol dollar, the corrupt governments of Washington and Whitehall will target people like me as the radicals, for the extremists, for not subscribing to an obvious lie. The mayor of London is a Muslim. That city was stupid enough to... Elect him. This is what the mayor of London, the Muslim, said. We have to accept terror as a way of life in the modern world. They elect a Muslim and he says, accept Muslim terror. It's just part of life. Because it's part of life in their world. They kill each other. It's supposed to be part of life in our world. And if you simply point out what he says, you're the bad guy. No, Theresa May is the bad guy. Barack Obama was the bad guy. The Clintons were the bad guys. George Bush was the bad guy. But unless we stop believing what everyone in their right mind knows is a lie, more will die. But let us remember, when you turn away from Christ, he takes his hand of protection of the nation that turns from them. Righteousness exalts a nation. The moral landslide in the West has paved the way for this. When you read radical Islamic literature as I have, I've read it, it's on the internet. It's printed and distributed in England. When you read it, it says you're letting your country be taken over by homosexuals. We'll stop this. You got a crime problem? We'll take thieves and cut their hands off. Black Lives Matter? Not in the Islamic world. Chad? Mauritania? Sudan and Niger? Wealthy Muslims and Afro-Arabs own black African slaves in the 21st century. Yet the stupidity in America of black people listening to Farrakhan turning to the religion of black slavery. And the first countries to abolish slavery were Christian. The last ones to abolish it were Muslim, except they haven't abolished it. They call it employment contracts. You take underage girls, pay their families in impoverished countries, and bring these poor Asian and black girls to work in oil-rich Muslim countries, it's virtually slavery. Everybody knows it. But Mr. Trump did not speak about human rights. Oh, we're going to support the people of Britain, he says. Look, these people have no sense of scripture. They have no sense about what's being done to the Christians in the Arab world. The media says nothing of the Christians being driven out of the Middle East where Christianity began and where Christians have been for centuries. And I'm speaking about Christians broadly, not just evangelicals. Now it's London, Orlando, San Bernardino, Manchester, a resort in the south of France, Paris, Mumbai, 
Moscow, Munich. It can happen anywhere. Islamic riots on Bondi Beach in Cronulla in Sydney, Australia. Australians coming home in body bags from vacation in Bali. The southern Philippines. All over the world it's the same story. And all over the world we're told the same lie. It's a religion of peace and tolerance. Well, the pop music industry is being hit. They sing about peace and brotherhood and how bad anyone is who speaks up against what's really happening. The music industry will be finished. It'll be finished. They won't have an industry anymore. Uh, they targeted homosexuals in Orlando. If these attacks happened in London at Vauxhall, that's an area of London with a high homosexual population demographically. That's who they're going after. But the same left that yells about gay rights or lesbian rights <laughs> yells against doing anything to stop Islamic immigration. It's insanity. Go ahead, turn your back on the persecuted church in those countries and bring unvetted Islamic immigrants who should be going to Muslim countries into your own. See what's going to happen. You really want to know what's happening. And if they really want to know what's going on, they'd read the book of Daniel. But they have no interest in that. They'd rather read the New York Times or the Washington Post if they're literate, or the Huffington Post, or some other litany of lies. This is the reality. Now London. Where will it be tomorrow? Unless there is a return to the faith of our fathers, and unless there is a recognition of what Islam is, an anti-Semitic religion that persecutes Christians, unless we stop playing this game, it's only a minority and it's not true Islam, when it's the majority, and they say, they say it is true Islam unless we stop this ridiculous charade for the sake of petrodollars and a blind left-wing ideology. It's going to continue. We'll facilitate it. They just don't get it. What bothers me, however, is that so many Christians don't get it. You even have anti-Israel Christians. I've even heard of Calvary Chapel pastors now sympathetic to the so-called Palestinian Islamic cause. They were just in Israel with Brian Broderson. This is the way the book of Daniel and the book of Revelation say it's going to stop. I thank God that I have a leader. I thank God that my leader told me what's going to happen. And I thank God that my leader is coming to put an end to it. My leader is Hamashiach Yeshua Adonai, the Lord Jesus Christ. For your own sake and for your families, I hope to God he's yours as well. The real Jesus, not the Jesus of Bono, Bono, whatever his name is. Not the Jesus of the pop music industry. That's not the real one. The real one is the Jesus of this book. And there's none other. Finally, as with Manchester, I'd once again like to express my condolences. My heartfelt condolences to the victims' families the people who've been murdered by fundamentalist Islam. Don't believe the lie. Believe the truth. This is the truth. The Judeo-Christian scriptures. The same nations at the center of world events in biblical times are at the center of world events again. They're still trying to destroy Israel but will not succeed. 
They make war against the saints of the Most High. But ultimately, they will not succeed. Jesus will succeed. Why are these countries? Israel and the countries that surround it at the center of world events? Syria, Iran, Persia, Iraq, which was Babylon. Why? Read it. It's exactly what it says was going to happen. Welcome to the new world. Judgment begins in the house of God. God is judging the Islamic world. He's judging it. But he's also judging the Judeo-Christian world and using Islam to do it. My dear friends, I don't hate anybody except Satan. I love people. I love Arab people, Asian people, African people, Caucasian people. As a Christian, I'm called to love all of them. But I'm not called to believe a lie. And either are you. The politicians lie, the media lies, the academics lie, but the Word of God tells the truth. Read it. Believe it. It's never been wrong. The only hope is Jesus, the Jewish Messiah. The only hope is his return. And all of these events, including the attack today in London, shows that his return is coming soon. Again, our sincere condolences to these families. My name is Jacob Prash. Coming to you from Los Angeles, God bless.